If you're like me, or really any human being for that matter, you feel anxious, and perhaps you feel anxious on a daily basis, or at least a continual basis. And I just wanted to share what I do when I feel overwhelmingly anxious to the point where it impedes on my functioning on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's very simple for me. Um, that's not to say it's easy to practice, but it's a very simple thing, a technique that I do, and that is breathing. Uh, I deep breathe. And um, I sit, I find a comfortable seat, and I sit and I start breathing. And I focus on my breath. And what that does for me is it gets me back into my body. So usually the source of anxiety for me is something not always, but it's, it can be something external, an external situation that's causing me stress or un, something unpredictable that's happened that, again, um, causes that stress response in me and makes me anxious. The other type of anxiety that I personally experience is something that I lovingly refer to as painful self-awareness, and that can be also coined, termed as boredom, really. <laughs> Um, so when I'm not doing much, you know, there's that saying, uh, what is it? I don't even know the saying. It's something like um, idle hands are the devil's plaything or something like that, something along those lines. And basically what that means is that, um, you know, to keep busy is to kind of keep sane. <laughs> so um, that's another way is keeping busy um, even if it's just um, you know walking back and forth in my apartment or in the hallway I will do that and I often do do that um, for instance after dinner I will routinely step outside I just put my shoes on step outside and I walk back and forth along the length of the hallway six or seven times and it honestly is like magic it it first of all it kind of it's nice to move after I've eaten. Uh, it's nice to move a little bit because I think it helps digestion. But that aside, anxiety-wise, it just, it kind of expends some of that anxious energy that I might be feeling, and it's effective. And so I will just breathe and focus on my steps, and like I said, just walk back and forth six or seven times across the entire length of the hallway, and that is a fantastic way of, um, just really managing stress in the moment. But going back to the deep breathing, um, I do practice meditation in the morning every single day as part of my morning routine. Um, I meditate for 20 to 30 minutes each day in silence um, as I practice my breathing. And that really sets the tone for the day. But in the moment, if I'm feeling overwhelmed and overwhelmed with anxiety, I will take my tongue to the roof of my mouth and um, separate my jaw, relax my facial, facial muscles, and I will start square breathing. So I will inhale for a count of four, sustain the breath for a count of four, exhale through a count of four, and sustain the exhalation for a count of four. And I will just repeat that process for as long as I need to center myself and feel grounded. And even then, sometimes it doesn't work because I'm so anxious. And so then what I will do is I will get, um, I will find a word um, in my brain, whatever word, it could be magazine, newspaper, glasses, I will pick a word and I will repeat the word as I breathe so that I can further focus my energy in the moment on what's happening. I deal with anxiety in a way that um, it might not work for everyone. I'm just sharing, as always, I'm just sharing what I do. Um, but what I do nowadays is I actually let myself feel that. I allow the feeling and sensation to let it run its course, so to speak, because I find that that allows me to really um, not only engage in what's happening with my body, which I think is very important, is to recognize and really honor my body. Is So if, my, if, if I'm experiencing a panic attack, for instance, in the most extreme example, 
I honor that process, that my body is reacting in such a way that it's serving a purpose in that moment. And that purpose is probably as a self-preservation technique in, in my body's hormonal uh, homeostatic system. Somehow that is reacting in such a way that yes, might be disproportionate to the situation at hand, which often in my experience is what a panic attack is. It's it can be often disproportionate, um, but again, I don't invalidate my feelings. If I'm reacting in such a way that I am, I have come to a place now in my life where I find it most effective to honor that process and I let that process run its course and that kind of expedites my recovery, so to speak, from the entire um, circumstance of stress. So in other words, it mitigates the stress more effectively. And um, for me, it th this did not happen overnight. The, the um, ability to cope with my stress in a healthy way through breathing and meditation. I have for years practiced breathing and meditation, but I had, I had also been engaging in unhealthy, dysfunctional, self-abusive habits too. Um, that I now recognize were, again, serving a purpose to help me stay alive, really. But now that I've been practicing much more, um, much more in a committed way, I'll say, uh, it wasn't that I wasn't practicing before, I was, but I don't think I was 100% committed because I was delineating some of my energy to my dysfunctional habits. So. Uh, call them what you will, vices or bad habits, dysfunctions, and you know, people, these behaviors that become pathologized in, you know, most people that have, that struggle with mental health issues, which I would argue is everybody that's human. Um, that's just my opinion, um, because I think to be human is to be flawed and in some way or another suffering or struggling with something. I've never met anyone who is just completely perfect and infallible. I don't think that exists. So, um, yeah, the biggest thing that I have found helps me is sitting with my breath. And I will do this even in public. I don't sit, of course, but, uh, well, actually, sometimes I do if there's a place to sit. <laughs> but um, if I'm waiting in line and the, something strikes me, and something meaning anxiety strikes me for whichever reason, again, I will, I will close my eyes with my groceries, with my grocery cart, and just take even 60 seconds to focus on my breath. And it really does work. It really helps me ground myself in the moment. And I find that just connecting with my body again and realizing the reality of the situation that um, in that situation I just explained, for instance, I will ground myself by breathing and then I will open my eyes and I will look at my surroundings and reaffirm in my brain, you know, I'm in the grocery store, I'm getting groceries. This is, I will just affirm what is and that really helps too because it brings me back into the moment, the current moment. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't try and resist because um, anxiety or any feelings really, um, the more that you resist what you're experiencing, um, the more difficult and challenging it is going to be to navigate through that emotion, I find. And especially when it comes to negative emotions, resistance makes it fester and then that accumulates right because it festers and then you put it aside and then it you accumulate more and you put it aside and what do you think is going to happen eventually to that pile of clutter that mental clutter it's either going to destruct from the inside so you're going to implode in some way in some self-destructive way or self-sabotaging way that's going to harm you or equally bad <laughs> Um, you're going to project that onto someone else and hurt someone else. 
and oftentimes both occur concurrently. So um, I would just, you know, I'm just again sharing what I do for anxiety. People deal with anxiety in all kinds of ways and I, I am the first to admit that I have dealt with my anxiety in the past in unhealthy ways, in self-sabotaging ways, in self-destructive and in self-abusive ways. And I most certainly am not claiming to be um, perfect in my treatment, my self-treating and my self-correcting of anxiety. Um, but the, the good thing is that I, as an anxious person, I often experience this emotion, this feeling, so that gives me plenty of opportunity to practice. And I actually enjoy that, <laughs> strangely. Um, I enjoy obstacles these days because it, the obstacle is an opportunity for me to practice more and to improve and to be a better person, a better version of myself than I was yesterday. And that's all I strive to be. I don't compare myself to anybody in the world. Even people I admire, I don't compare myself to them. I admire them for what they are and treat that with reverence. But for my own self, I honor myself and my path and where I am. And I only aim to improve myself from where I was and who I was um, previous to the, the current moment now and that's all I can do as a human being on this earth in my lifetime is um, be the best version of myself and the most genuine authentic person I can be as Jennifer and that's what I'm doing um, and I'm I'm intent on I'm intent and I'm content on moving forward that way. If you, um, I shouldn't say if because I think everyone experiences anxiety as I said, but I would love it if you would leave a comment down below if any of this, um, if any of what I've said today resonated with you or if you struggle too with extreme anxiety or have in the past and what tools and coping mechanisms, be them negative or positive. Um, because that's all helpful to, to me and to the other people watching. Um, it's helpful to, to gain perspective from other people's experiences. Even the bad experiences, they teach us um, a great deal. So please leave a comment if you're so inclined. And as always, thank you for watching.